Hey, yo, what's up guys? Baby Bear 4812 coming at you one more time. Today we're doing problem 1017, the populating next right pointers in each node part two problem. There's this is a obviously a part two to a part one that I have answered before, and I'll leave a, a link in the description. Um, I, I'd say the problems they're not entirely mutually exclusive. You can do one without the other. There are some differences. Uh, the differences are not radical, but they exist. I, I would still urge you if you haven't done that other one go check it out uh, before doing this one because I think it might be slightly easier. Now, with that said, uh, this this problem has been very popular with Bloomberg. Uh, Facebook, Amazon as well have liked it. And I think it's a good problem, all right? It won't be too difficult. I think we can, we can come up with a pretty intuitive way to do it, but at the same time, not so obvious either. So I'll zoom in here and say that we're, we're given a binary tree with the, the following structure, where every node has a value, a left and right node, and also a next. Node. So this part's new. The rest of it, we're, we're, we're familiar with. This is standard node otherwise. We're told to populate each next pointer to point to its next right node. There is no next right node. The pointer, the next pointer, sorry, should be set to null. Initially, all next pointers are set to null. Uh, we may only use constant extra space. Recursive approach is fine. We may assume implicit stack space does not count as extra space to the problem. Um, this is a follow-up. So the, the version I'm going to be doing, we, we will be using... Um, extra space. I'll leave it for, for you guys for the challenge to do it the recursive way. Um, but anyways, that's just a, like a fair disclaimer ahead of time. If we look at an example of what this looks like, uh, this is the original tree and the, the next point are always pointing to the to the right. Um, well, the one points to null, that's our root. The two is going to point to the three and three points outward or points out. Um, and then we've got four points to five, five points to seven, which goes to null. In part one to this problem, we had perfect binary trees, meaning that we always had left and right pointers and everything was perfectly balanced. This isn't the case here. So we've got to figure out how to how to deal with this, with this scenario over here. Um, and they gave us a little explanation of how this works, but basically we're just, we're gonna return the root after populating all the all the null pointers. Uh, constraints were told the number of nodes is less than 6,000. Sure, that's not really gonna change anything for us. Let's take a look uh, at how we're gonna think about this. If I've got, I've got this first pointer over here, okay, and and what makes this again? And I always say this with tree problems, but we, we think about how could this problem potentially become more trivial? It would be more trivial if I was sitting at this two and I was able to say, well, if my parent has a right child, let me just go up through my parent, find the right child, and and set a pointer to go that way, right? We can't do that here because there is no pointer to the to the parent node, okay, and that's pretty common. So. Then we think to ourselves, how else can we go about this problem? Well, in general, if we think about how how, how we go through tree problems, we we often have to traverse them, and and sometimes, or rather, I, I'd argue maybe every time, it's a good idea to ask yourself, how do I want to go about traversing this tree? If we're going like this, we're trying to point from left to right, so all the way we start at the you know, most the leftist side, and then point to the right, um, and we go down level by level. That kind of screams breadth first search to me, all right? And and I, I think with the the constant space solution, ignoring the call stack, is we could we could do a, a BFS solution using recursion. Again, I'm going to do it iteratively just because I think it'll be more clear to understand how we're piecing this all together. But BFS would be the way to go here. And so then the question becomes, what do we do about the fact that, that these are now missing? Again, especially if you if you know, if you, if you did the earlier problem, part one, this would have been our example. And then we talked about how you can kind of almost seemingly bounce around by taking care of your children before taking care of yourself kind of thing. In this case, we can't do that. However, I would argue that it still won't be all too difficult for this reason. If we're solving this problem using BFS, with the BFS will typically use a queue. And, and in our queue, we'll originally load up just the one node, the root node, and we'll then pop it off. So we pop it off when we're analyzing it. And then we pop on its children if the children exist. So we'll have a two and we'll have a, a three. Well, as we're popping these children off, I don't, it doesn't really matter to us um, whether there are or aren't children missing because once I pop the two off, I'm going to add the four. Wow. Then I'm going to add the five. That is shocking. And then when I pop the three off, I'm going to add the seven. Since we can set up a four loop to, to only run the length of whatever the initial queue size is, we can just say that while we're going through that for loop, take the node I'm looking at and make the next pointer 
over to whatever else is in the queue. So whatever item comes next in the queue, that's it. I don't care if that next item falls right here, as in kind of the, that, I don't know what they call this. This is a parent, this is like an aunt or an uncle um, node. If they have a child or not, like if you have a cousin node here, it doesn't matter because whatever comes up next in the queue is what's next, almost visually speaking, when you look at the tree. And so if we just, if we understand the problem that way, where whatever comes next in the queue is what I'm going to point right to. And again, when we're iterating through, through the queue with a, a for loop, it will end right here. This iteration will end right here because we're initializing it to run with a, a length of two, whatever's in here when we, when we start popping off. And if we can follow that logic, then essentially we can, we can set up all of our, all of our next pointers to, to kind of keep pointing to whatever comes up next in the queue. The code itself may, we may have to make a, a couple of tweaks, maybe get just a tiny bit clever on how we're actually going to go, um, go about setting these pointers and, and keeping track of them. But, you know, nonetheless, it will be, it will be a BFS problem. We're going to take the items in the queue and every time we see an, an item being popped off, we're going to take the previous item we had and, and set its next property to be what we just pulled off of the queue. In terms of edge cases and, and maybe sort of error checking we may have to do, if we're given a, a null node, we'll just return null or, or none in Python. Um, apart from that, I think that what we'll see as we as we write the code out is things like having just one node in a row or, or even two, we'll, there'll be almost two cases. And then the third case will be when we have something like this, where we've got three or more nodes and then we, we need to do a bit of skipping and kind of continual tracking of the items that are coming off the queue, you can almost think about the queue as a, as like a, a conveyor belt almost. Um, whatever is coming off the, the conveyor belt, we have to keep track of the pointers and make sure we're, we're, we're appending things properly. When I say appending, I mean attaching to that next pointer. And, and that's about it in terms of the theory. I, I'd, I'd argue this problem isn't too theory heavy. Uh, the code will be, will be a touch, a touch more involved, uh, but, but still overall doable. Um, overall, I'm not, I'm not introducing any sort of new ideology here i'm not i'm not breaking or ideologies i'm not breaking like uh, i don't think I'm, I'm breaking anyone's anyone's brains here by by sharing this stuff so um if, if you have any questions if it doesn't make sense let me know down below I'm, I'm happy to elaborate on the explanation as always but i think otherwise we're we're good to jump into the code and see how we can make this happen I'll move this over and and begin with my our standard error checking so i'll say if we're not given a root we're going to return either the root itself or, or doesn't really matter. Um, so here, so if when we do a, a, a breath for a search problem, we we said that we always or I didn't say, but we, we do it typically with a queue. So I'm going to initialize a queue, and I'm going to use the deck um, deck as part of the Python collections, and and within this queue, I'm going to pen the root. So that's going to be our, our beginning. We're going to have this overall this this while loop, and then let's just say while queue. So while there are items in the queue, we're we're going to do a whole bunch of stuff. And eventually we're going to return the root node. Okay, so I'm not all I'm doing is modifying the pointers in place. So at the end of the day, I just I gotta pump out whatever was given to me, which is again this this root node. And so this is where a majority of our work is going to lie. So since we're going to be since we are going to be um, tracking two or more items at a time, I'm going to need two pointers. Okay, and, and and this is I think one of those examples where, where as we as we walk through the code, I think it'll make make a bit more sense why we set it up in the way we did, as opposed to the other way around. So if if it's a bit confusing or maybe this part is a touch non-intuitive, just bear with me, and I hope that by the end of the video it will make a bit more sense. I'm going to have some sort of curve variable, which which is going to just point a current node that I'm looking at, and I'll, I'll initialize that to none. I'm also going to do the same thing with a, a next node, and I'll, I'll set that to none. The reason I'm not, I'm not typing it as next is that's a keyword in Python, and so to avoid any, any headaches that may cause, I'll, just, I'll refer to current as being my, my point right now, and the next being the potential next one, next item that I'm looking at. Now we actually want to take our queue, and, and like I was mentioning here, when we, we kind of want to break off and say, let me, let me pop off the items in this queue that exists, you know, in it right now. Um, I only want to go so far as, as there are items in there. And, and, and for that specific length, for that one specific level, if you will, that's how many items I want to pop off. So what I'm going to say is I, I want to make a loop and I don't really care about the variable name here. So I'll leave that as an underscore. So for some underscore in the, in the range of the length of the queue, let's call that right. We're going to start popping items off. Now there are three scenarios, like I mentioned briefly in the in the kind of the theory in the whiteboarding part. 
where we said um, we can either have no 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 kind of items whatsoever so far so I've, I haven't looked at a single item on this level yet and in that case that'll be if not current we don't have any current value we're, we're gonna do some stuff again I'm, I'm leaving this out just for a second to set up the framework otherwise if, if that's not the case um, uh, if we don't have a next variable so maybe we ha we have a current now but we don't have a next so we only have our we have just that one item we don't have the second we haven't connected them um, then we're going to do something else and then otherwise uh, if both of them exist we're going to do a, a whole third set of operations and and this again I'm, just, I'm setting the framework up here just so we have the the big picture before we dive into the details if we don't have a current so i haven't taken anything off the queue yet I'm going to say that cur is equal to q.pop left because again I want to take from the, the beginning of the queue. And then once I take that off, if it has any children, I want to add those to the queue. So I'm going to say if cur.left, q.append cur.left, and then same thing with the right child, if cur.right, q.append cur.right. And that's it. If we haven't done anything, if all we have is one item in our in our level, so think about uh, something like this where we're just looking at the root we pop the root off that's it that's the only item we have on the queue that's all, all we're going to pop off if it's got a left child we'll append that to the queue if it's got a right child we'll append that to the queue right and those aren't mutually exclusive we can do both of them so I, I, I think that's okay so far now what about that would kind of take care of our first level notice by default the the next pointer for this curve is none and that makes sense right here we want to leave it as none I'm not going to alter it in any way the only time where we'd want to have a next pointer is if we have two or more items in a level. So that's where, where we're going to look at, at this scenario here. So we found our curve, but we don't have a next yet. If we don't have a next, then I'm going to say that next is equal to q.pop left, which is the preceding item that we have in the queue right now. Okay. Now, let's think about where we're at right now. Let's pretend that I'm, I'm right here, and this is now my, my curve, and this is my next. Okay. I know that I need to go from cur to next. That's why I need to set my pointer up. So given that that's the case, I'm going to say cur dot next is equal to next. And that's it, I've now connected those. Now I go through the same process of saying if next has any children, let's append those onto the queue. So I'll say if, if uh, next dot left, uh, q dot append next dot left, and if next dot right, so if it has a right child, q dot append next dot right. And that's it for the second step. So if all we have is two items in a level, for example, right here, I'm, I'm going to say, um, I have my cur, I have my next, I'm going to connect, right? Cur.next goes to next. So right here, cur.next is equal to next. Um, and we've added next children now onto the, onto the queue. So this is, imagine our queue now, this has been popped off. This has been popped off. We've added four and five, which are two's children. Okay, they're right here. And we've added seven, which is three's child. So now we're in this scenario where, so we, we've kind of, we've finished this queue. And I'm, I'm almost walking through the loop here in the open. Uh, this would iterate through two times because when we started this loop, all we had was a two and the three in the queue. This is all we had. This loop is now done. We jump out of this loop. We ask, well, there's a queue, which there is. There's still items in the queue. We now reset our pointers to current next. Both of them are none. We don't have anything, all right? But what we do have in the queue is the four, the five, and the seven. So if not cur, we don't have a cur, our cur is gonna be four, right? This is the item we're gonna pop off, four is gone. Four is gone. And that's going to be our, I'll call that cur. We finish through that loop, we go through the next one, we say if we don't have a next, which we don't, next is going to be five, right? This is gonna be next. Next is going to be five, we pop that off, we set cur.next equals next. So we pop that off, 4.next equals 5. Perfect. All right, we're good. Now, now we keep on looping. And now we get to the 7, right? This is our final item in our queue here. And so we get to the 7 and we say, if not cur, no, so we have a cur, it's 4. We have a next, that's 5. So now what do we do here? Okay, now we jump into, we jump into here, we get the 7. So what do we want to do here? Let's think about this. We have the seven here, and I know I want to connect the five to the seven, okay? Well, let's first off make a, a reference to this seven. So I'm gonna say that cur now is going to equal q.pop left. So I'm no longer pointing at the four. Oops, that was my old solution. I'm no longer pointing at the four. Now I lost my pen. I'm now pointing right here, okay? 
So I'm pointing at the 7, and I know I need to connect the 5 to the 7. So 5 is n, 5 is next, sorry, 7 is, is cur. So I'm going to say next.next .next is equal to cur. What does this mean? 5 next is 7. 5 next is 7. Okay? So far, so good. We're going to do something similar here, and now we're going to say for cur. So if 7 had any children, we're going to append those. We'll see if... Uh, if cur.left, then you know what? Maybe I'll just copy this over because it's the exact same code. And maybe there's a cleaner way to modularize this. So I'm, I'm sorry if the, the code's a bit repetitive. Um, but we, I, I think it's at least understandable this way. We, so we've appended the left, we appended the right. And now we have to somehow move this along forward. Move this forward along. Move this along forward. I'm not sure. We need to move this along. All right. So we're done with the five. The, the five means nothing to us anymore. Okay, we're now looking at this seven over here. So we have a cur. Okay. Since we're starting at the beginning here, what I would argue is essentially is the following. So we say next on next is equal to cur. What we want to do is, is let's pretend now the reason I'm kind of getting into this scenario is what if we did have more children? What if there was a you know there was a, a four here, this was like an eight, and then we had a, a nine right over here, for example. That is awful. And we had a 9. Okay. If we needed to keep on going, how would we go about how would we go about doing this? Well, we would have to do the following. I would say let's set the next pointer equal to the current pointer. The next pointer we're going to set equal to the current pointer, which is going to be right here. So actually this is going to be current and it's going to be next. What's going to happen now? If they're both, if the current and the next are both pointing at this at this seven, when we come around, we're not going to jump into this because we have a cur. We're not going to jump into this because we have a next. What we're going to do is jump into here, and we're going to see that cur is equal to q dot pop left, meaning cur would now be this this nine over here. Next dot next. So next, remember, is the seven still now? It's almost confusing because the next is behind the cur, and so I'm, I'm sorry if the the naming didn't really make if it makes it a bit confusing, but the next is behind the cur right now. So I'm going to say next dot next is cur. Seven dot next is nine, right? Because this is now our current. This one over here, maybe I can make this more clear. This is now next. This is cur. Seven dot next is nine. Seven dot next is nine. We append nine's children. We append seven children. We move the next along. Repeat ad infinitum. That should do the trick. I'm going to run this really quickly to make sure there are no mistakes and submit it. And we're good. Perfect. So let me, let me minimize this just so I can show you guys the code in, in one go here. This is the entirety of the code in its, in its fullest. We started off by doing error checking. Then we did a standard breadth burst search by, by setting up a queue and then and looping through these items and keeping two pointers, one called current and one called next. If we popped up, if we were at our first item, in the queue, we just we popped it off, added its children. We were at our second item in the queue, we popped it off, we set our, our current pointing to the next item, so we set up that initial connection, we added its children. Finally, if we had, we already had two pointers and we're adding a third or a fourth or fifth node in this level, we repeated a very similar process and then we just moved the pointers along one more over um, and so that, that'll that'll rinse and repeat and, and get us all connected and at the, at the end of this all, we return the root. I hope that was clear. I hope this helped. If you have any questions, as always, drop them down below. Uh, like, comment, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Any other questions you want me to answer, do let me know. Um, any feedback you have, I, I am always looking for feedback. So if anything was confusing, uh, if you want to see less of something, please do let me know. It goes a long way. And I guess, yeah, that's it. I will, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.